As Blender is carving its way to the top of the game, Movie, ArcViz and VFX industry as the most popular tool for 3D modeling and rendering, we are blessed to be part of the journey and see it improve day by day, night by night. We saw several features implemented in the last version, 3.4, that changed how we use Blender and thought that was the peak of Blender. But no, the peak seems to move up and up, especially with these new features coming to Blender 3.5. Support for VDM brushes. Sculpting brushes in Blender have always had a limitation, you could only displace a mesh up or down. Any details where the mesh falls over itself or creates a bridge or curves over itself was not possible. And that's one of the reasons why artists preferred ZBrush. VDM brushes or vector displacement brushes allow you to use already made parts from other models or artists and apply them to your model in a single brush stroke. This allows faster iterations and kit bashing of models. There are already hundreds of VDM brushes for ZBrush users. Now all we need is an add-on that, that converts those ZBrush VDM brushes into Blender supported brushes and I'm sure the community is already working on that. Viewport real-time compositing. This is one I have been excited about for a long time. I love working in real-time so I jumped in excitement on hearing that the viewport real-time compositing feature was ready for prime time. Long gone are the days where you have to render the image first before you can do any compositing. You can now do the compositing as you are modeling in real time. You can also turn off the compositing in the viewport and only view the effects through the camera to keep focused while working on your scene. So now in the viewport, if you go to look dev or cycles, you have the option to turn on the compositor you have through the camera always. That means outside the camera. Now I can go to the compositor here. If I added maybe an RGB curves, let's make sure that uh, it's on here. Play with some color, you can see we get our viewport compositing. Can add some lens distortion, create a fish eye effect within the viewport. A fish eye. And, uh, these also work in cycles. One feature that uh, Evie had over cycles was the, the bloom effect. We couldn't do bloom in cycles, but now with the real time viewport, uh, let me first disable this. We can easily do that using the glare node. So if I search for glare, you can see I can add, easily add streaks, light streaks down for glow, simple stars. Uh, so any node that has this icon here means that uh, it won't work. So we can use the bokeh blur to blur out to create some blur effects color balance color correction everything directly in the viewport the new hair assets blender 3.4 introduced a new hair system that worked based on geometry nodes taking advantage of all the powerful nodes that come with it. The disadvantage was setting up nodes required that you knew how to use nodes and since geometry nodes is a fairly new feature, most artists have not tried it or know how to set up something complex as a hair system. The Blender team knew this was always going to be a problem for artists who just wanted to create hair but don't have the time or want to learn geometry nodes. So they created a solution in form of hair assets. These are called essential assets that come shipped with Blender. They are a building foundation for any type of hair look you may want. To a non-geometry nodes user, you get the hair parameters you can control in the modifiers tab to achieve the look you want. To anyone else who is comfortable with geometry nodes, you get both worlds. The hair parameters are just exposed group inputs of a geometry nodes setup using already familiar nodes. There has also been an, an improvement in cloth simulation where the cloth self-collision detection is much, much smoother and uh, faster to simulate. Now you can see how detailed my cloth is and uh, because I have a lot of resolution in the cloth, uh, it's, it's a bit slow, but it, I can assure you that uh, it's faster than it would, it would have been before. There's also a new image attribute that you can use to get information about your image. So for example, if I bring in an image, image info, you can see we have the width height has alpha to check whether the image has alpha, frame count and FPS. And this can be used to influence uh, the shape of anything in your geometry nodes. For example, we have, if we bring in a grid, we can influence the width and height of the of that grid uh, to get the same width as the image and the height. Uh, but because we don't have any image here, Let's import in an image here. I'm going to use something like this. The plane now has the same width, but because our width is too big, it's uh, going out of the view bound. So I'm going to scale this down to something reasonable so that we can see the image properly. And uh, you can see this. we get the same aspect ratio. If I change this to a different image, 
uh, which is in a different aspect ratio you can see what we get uh, if I preview this image uh, this is just an image info so you don't get any color output what you can do is use an, a, an image texture and uh, just bring in the image either directly here or just uh, have an image node uh, that uh, can bring in the image connect that here and uh, connect the image here now if you preview this image we don't see a lot because we don't have enough subdivisions here so if I subdivide this a lot you get this uh, if you want this to map correctly uh, you can just connect the vmap directly into the vector and uh, let's change the image to something more maybe something like this you can see what we get we also have a blur node a new blur node uh, that you can find an attribute it blends in the attributes with the different attributes uh, for example if i change this to color and connect this to the blur you would expect it to blur things here but uh, it doesn't work well when you have a UV map connected to this so if i remove this you can see it works as expected the blur node is not limited to just textures you can also use it to blur out other things like noise so for example if we have a set position here and uh, just use a combine x y and in the z position if we add a noise texture uh, to push things up maybe let's add more subdivisions like this we can smoothen this up by just using blur attribute increasing the iterations we'll just do that you can make things look more smooth like that and uh, you can use the weight to select what part of uh, this you, you want to blur out so i can even use another type of noise maybe let's this time let's use a voronoi texture as the weight and just use a ramp to get some good contrast or we could use a gradient to demonstrate this better and uh, if we increase the iterations you can see what i mean so Uh, you can even have an alien looking planet just mixing these now we also have a smooth easing operator in the graph editor that lets you smoothen or add superposition to any keyframes uh, for example sometimes when you import in animation from other softwares like uh, from say mixamo uh, we can have this uh, jumping if we look at the keyframe you can see we have a lot of baked keyframes here that we might want uh, to make changes to we now have some easing features that could let us ease in some of this animation for example this character is jumping forward sometimes you just want them to jump but in, in a stationary fashion so i can select only just this uh, this keyframe uh this keyframe that i'm moving the character up and i just use the slider operation to break it down so that they are running in one position and that was a lot harder to do previously and also come in here and uh, there is this jump up let me just select only that frame try a different option blend it to his neighbors and so the jump is much shorter now or blend to default value and i can even select half of the keyframes and just set the ease operation to that so i can change uh, this a bit so there are a lot of things you could do now uh, that we have previously harder to do so slider ease change the ease again 